Hello everyone, and welcome to another video. My track guide for Autodromo Jose Carlos Pace, also known as Interlagos, in the GR86. Let's get into it. For qualifying, you want to be all the way on the right. Section with turns 1, 2 and 3 is all about setting up for the exit, because we have a fairly long straight after turn 3. I use the end of the wall here on the right as my braking marker, and I'm really hard on the brake all the way up to 95% brake pressure. And I'm easing that off all the way to the first curb. And we want to cut this curb quite a lot, because that will help you get earlier on the throttle. As soon as you're on the curb, you should be able to go full throttle again. Don't take too much of the curb, as it is raised, so it will unsettle the car quite a lot. Then cut all of the curb for turn 2, and lean on the inside curb of turn 3 all the way around. Follow the curb as long as you can, but don't force it. So if the car wants to walk out towards the outside, let it. The braking zone down to turn 5 is a quite good place to try and overtake, especially because you have the draft for this long straight here. But in qualifying, you want to be all the way on the right to help open up the turn a bit more. My braking marker for this turn is the road here on the right. Once I get past that, I'll go on the brake and I'll hit it hard. I'll max out at about 90% brake pressure and easing it off all the way to the inside curb. We don't want to cut the curb too much as the inside part of it is quite raised. Once we are on the curb though, you should be able to go full throttle again. Just don't walk the car too far out, just use the outside curb. Do not touch the solid green part as that will give you an incident point. So if you want to be sure, only use the green and yellow curb. I am really on the limit there. Now bring the car back all the way to the curb and stay on the left side of the track. For turn 6 and 7, we do actually turn in before we start to brake. And I turn in by the marshals post here on the left. Once I get close to the inside curb for turn 6, I'll go on the brake. It will vary a little bit how much brake you need, depending on your exit out of turn 7. But here I just did a quick tap to about 40%. The goal is to stay fairly close to the right side of the track, without taking too much speed off. Once in the middle of 6 and 7, I'll go on the throttle again. And you of course want to be hitting both curbs here. Once you're on the throttle, you should let the car walk out to the outside for turn 8. And you can use a lot of the curb for the outside. The braking marker for turn 8 is not that clear, mostly because we're looking away from the corner. I try and use the outside text here that says Sao Paulo. Once I lose sight of that, I'll be on the brake. But you might be able to find something better. Again, we are hard on the brake to about 90% brake pressure. And you want to ease that off all the way to the inside curb of turn 8. This curb we can cut quite a lot, and we should utilize that to open up turn 9 a lot more. In this run I could have cut it a bit more, this works as well. Once we are at the inside curb, you should be able to go full throttle again. The aim is to come out just about mid-track for turn 9. Once for turn 9 we might need to stabilize the car to get it into the curb, and we do this with a little bit of brake. Nothing more than a trail braking action though. Just before we get into the dip, you should be able to go full throttle again, because we have a big curb on the outside that we can utilize without getting a 1x. Once you're on that curb, you want to bring the car all the way back to the left side of the track again. For turn 10, we're gonna use the tree here on the outside as our braking marker. Once we get past that, I go to about 65% brake pressure, and easing that off all the way to the inside curb. We're gonna apex just a little bit later than the middle of the track, and I'll also cut the curb quite a lot here. Don't cut it too much, as it will unsettle the car quite a lot. Once we're at the curb, you should be able to go full throttle again, because we are banking just a little bit in the corner. We can use the green and yellow part of the curb. If you touch the one later than that, you'll get a 1x. For turn 11, I pretty much hug the curb all the way around, until we could go out on the curb for turn 12. We wanna be on the green and white part of the curb. If you touch the solid green, you'll get a 1x. For turn 12, we wanna maximize the exit speed again, because we are flat out all the way to turn 1 from this one. I brake when I get to this dusted part here just in front of us, and I go to about 85% brake pressure, and easing that off nearly all the way to the curb. Once I'm close to the curb, I'll go full throttle again. In this one I cut the curb a little bit too much, so it unsettled the car quite a lot. So the car bounced on me on the exit. That will have taken a bit of speed out of my uh, lap. And of course use all of the curb on the outside. Now it's all about taking as little speed out of the car as possible, because it's the motor layer we have this little quick bit here, which is flat out. I fully cut the first curb. You want to stay fairly close to the inside white line. Cut the first curb as much as you can. Cut the second curb. And of course cut the third curb as well. You want to be as smooth as you can with your inputs there to scrub up as little speed as possible. And now it's just all about taking the shortest route to the finish line. For qualifying you can hug the inside wall all the way to the finish line. But in the race you want to walk out to the right so you open up turn 1 again. And that's my lap around Autodromo Jose Carlos Pace, the motor layout. For your lap of 151.4, I have more track guides for the GR86 linked down below. I hope this guide helped you. If it did, leave a like down below. Consider subscribing as well. And now for the uninterrupted hot laps.